HRC, 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 HRC. Hebrew reader, Hebrew reader, Hebrew reader, church. Welcome to Hebrew Readers Church. I'm your brother, Kasafo. And I'm your brother, Zakwa. We hope you all are enjoying the Shabbat that day. Hope all is well. Peace and blessings be upon you all. In the name of our Lord, Yahweh Christ. Today, we got a good opportunity to get some understanding in how to honor and understand our heavenly parents, our Allah Hayyam. Zakwa, anything before we jump in here? No, I'm ready. All right, let's ride. Now, let's jump into commandments with promise. We have that first commandment with promise to prolong our life in honoring our parents. Yet, there are other commands with promise for understanding how to honor our heavenly parents that our life may be prolonged. Can you read Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 39 and 40, please? Know therefore this day, and consider it in thine heart. That Ahiah, he is Alahayim in heaven above, and upon the earth beneath, there is none else. Consider it in our hearts. That first commandment not to put another before Alahayim. Remember that he is Alahayim in all creation, and there is none else like him. Continue, please. Thou shalt keep therefore his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee this day that it may go well with thee and with thy children after thee, and that thou mayest prolong thy days upon the earth, which Ahaya the Alahayim giveth thee forever. With him in our heart, to keep his commands and statutes, our life will be prolonged. Things will be well with us and well for our children. So honoring our heavenly parents to obey their voice and their laws will prosper us and our posterity. These are good things to consider for our reasoning to do the right thing at all times. Continue in Deuteronomy 32, verse 46 and 47, please. And he said unto them, Set your hearts unto all the words which I testify among you this day, which ye shall command your children to observe to do, all the words of this law. For it is not a vain thing for you, because it is your life. And through this thing you shall prolong your days in the land, whether you go over to Jordan to possess it. Consider that. Honor our heavenly parents to obey all the law and teach our children to do likewise is not a vain thing for us, as we cannot take the name of our Allah in vain to blaspheme his name by not obeying his voice, because the words which he has spoken is actually our life. Anything on that, Zachba? No, no, I'm good. Okay. Now, seeking justification from Allah and understanding our heavenly parents. Let's jump into this here. Can you read the Gospel of Thomas chapter 101, verse 2, please? For my mother Mary is my mother of the flesh, but my true mother gave me life. Christ came from Mary in the flesh, but before he came down into the world in flesh, his true mother that gave him life in the spiritual world in the beginning of creation is the Holy Spirit. She is the mother of all creation, according to Thomas. Can you read Acts of Thomas chapter 38, please? We glorify and praise you. That's Christ, Yache, who we glorify and praise. And thine invisible father. That's Ahaya, Ashire Ahaya. All right. And thine Holy Spirit, the mother of all creation. Ruaka Kwadoshi, his true mother that gave him life. Her children are her fruits of her womb, just like any mother who bears children. Christ is not her only child, as she has children as well. Can you read Luke chapter 7, verse 35, please? But wisdom is justified of all her children. 
Notice the plurality. <laughs> she doesn't just have one child, okay? Even in the spiritual realm, we're going to get some understanding on how spirits have children as well. What we see in the earth is manifestation of what's in the heavens, in the spiritual world. Even in the spiritual realm, spirits have children too, like the seven women that minister unto the church. Can you read Hermas, vision 3, chapter 8, verse 2 to 5, please? I just wanted to touch on Luke 7 and 35 real quick, where it please. says, but wisdom is justified of all her children. That's why the scriptures say that Christ is the only begotten son. So you can actually understand that he's the only male. Amen. And you can reference the playlist, um, understanding the Allah because there are a few lessons a little while back that we went into this stuff. Okay. When you're ready with Hermes, please. Hermes vision three, chapter eight, verse two. She looked upon me and smiled and she saith to me, seeth thou seven women round the tower? I see them lady, say I. This tower is supported by them by commandment of the Lord. Now, this lady speaker in Hermes is the church herself, and the tower is her that Hermes is seeing. Notice these are women that surround the tower, supporting it. They're not virgins, so they're not unmarried. All right, continue, please. Here now their employments. The first of them, the woman with the strong hands, is called Faith. Through her are saved the elect of Elohim. And the second that is girded about and looketh like a man is called continence. She is the daughter of faith. Whosoever then shall follow her becometh happy in his life. And he shall refrain from all evil deeds, believing that if he refrain from every evil desire, he shall inherit eternal life. And the others, lady, who be they? They are daughters, one of the other. The name of the one is simplicity, of the next, knowledge, of the next, guilelessness, of the next, reverence, of the next, love. When then thou shalt do all the works of their mother, thou canst live. Question. Is their mother referring to faith or the Holy Spirit herself? That's the Holy Spirit or so. I just thought. <laughs> I didn't know that before. I just, I was just reading. I was like, hold on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there we see. Their mother is the Holy Spirit. When we do the works of her, all this stuff comes with it. Because her children, they manifest, they carry her characteristics, her mannerisms, if you will. And here we even see, in the spiritual world, female spirits have children. Now we know Christ is the son of the Holy Spirit, and she has children that she is justified by. Her other children are the twelve virgins, as a man has to be clothed in all the spirits of her children to enter the kingdom. Can you read Hermas parable 9, chapter 13, verse 2, please? And these virgins, who are they? They, say of he, are holy spirits. Just like their mother, these holy spirits differ from the seven women supporting the church. Continue, please. It's interesting that they all get a part of her, so they all become holy spirits being raised up like their mom. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and no man can otherwise be found in the kingdom of Elohim unless these shall clothe him with their garment. For if they receive only the name, but receive not the garment from them, thou profitest nothing. For these virgins are powers of the son of Elohim. If therefore thou bear the name, and not his power, thou shalt bear his name to none effect. Well, we also get an understanding of the family dynamic too, in what is being discussed here which we're going to get in depth on in a later lesson on the dynamics of family and relationships. These sisters 
of Yache. They're his powers. A brother has power to lead about a sister, as you may recall in 1 Corinthians 9 and 5. So Christ's sisters are his powers, and we must bear the power of them all, along with his name, to make it. All right? Because remember the law says a woman ought not to usurp authority over a man. So even in siblings' relationship, that brother has authority over his sister. And you can confirm it in different precepts, like in Jubilees, concerning a man or some brother can't give his sister to an unbeliever, or else he'll get in trouble for that, because he has authority to give his sister in marriage, all right? If his father isn't there, of course. Um, thank you. Continuing, let's find out who these sisters' names are, these other sisters of Yache here. Hermas, parable 9, chapter 15, verse 1 and 2, please. Declare to me, sir, say I, the names of the virgins. Here, saith he, the names of the more powerful virgins, those that are stationed at the corners. The first is faith. And here we get to see there are different types of faith, evidently. There's the spirit of faith, that woman that supports the church, and then there's the spirit of faith, that Holy Spirit, that virgin, okay? The woman has children while the virgin doesn't, so you can understand there is a differentiation between the two. Okay, continue, please. Well, the difference between those is that the woman is with the church, so they're pretty much handmaids to the church where the virgins are holy spirits. Mm -hmm. As virgins are kept in. <laughs> right. Interestingly, what you just said is confirmed in the precepts to show that the Holy Spirit is indeed behind all of this. In Proverbs 9 and 1, it says, Wisdom hath built her house. She hath hewn out her seven pillars. Remember, a wife is a pillar of rest. Mm -hmm. So those women are seven pillars unto whomever they're married to, right? <laughs> it goes on to say, in verse 3, it says, She has sent forth her maidens. Those seven spirits were sent forth to help build a church, to get her household built up, getting strengthening up Yache's household and such. So it's interesting seeing how she really is in everything. <laughs> Uh, continue when you're ready, please. And the second, continence. Now, continence, there's also a differentiation as well in that spirit because there was a woman named continence, and now we see there's a holy virgin named continence too. Okay, continue, please. And the third, power. And the fourth, long suffering. But the other station between them have these names, simplicity, guilelessness. So there are two types of these spirits because they're virgins and women that are called by these names. Continue, please. Purity, cheerfulness, truth, understanding, concord, and love. As well as there are two types of spirits of love, as there's the woman and the virgin. Continue, please. He that bears these names in the name of the son of Alahayim shall be able to enter into the kingdom of Alahayim. You can confirm these virgins are the Lord Yahweh's sisters by how they interact with him too. Let's look at that. See Hermas parable 9, chapter 6, verse 1 and 2, please. And behold, after a little while, I see an array of many men coming, and in the midst of a man of such lofty stature that he overtopped the tower. This man overtopping the tower is the Lord of the tower, Lord Yache. Continue, please. And the six men who superintended the building walked with him on the right hand and on the left. And all they that worked on the building were with him and many other glorious attendants around him. Those are all holy angels. And the six men attending, those are the archangels. Okay, continue, please. And the virgins that watched the tower ran up and kissed him, and they began to walk by his side round the tower. That's how sisters interact with a brother, joyfully. 
as we can learn in the precepts. Jump to chapter 11, verse 3 and 4, so we can see that, please. Where then, say I, shall I remain? Thou shalt pass the night with us, say they, as a brother, not as a husband. For thou art our brother, and henceforward we will dwell with thee, for we love thee dearly. But I was ashamed to abide with them. So for context, Hermas, the angel of repentance, left Hermas with the Holy Spirits, the virgins. And Hermas, he was uncomfortable staying there with them that night. Because as a man, he is still going through his growing process. But the Holy Spirit said, tell him, well, you're going to dwell with us as a brother. But he's uncomfortable because it's not something he's used to, right? Let's see what transpires. And she that seemed to be the chief of them began to kiss and embrace me. And the others seeing her embrace me, they too began to kiss me and to lead me round the tower to sport with me. They kissed them as sisters like they did unto their brother Yache. And they were there playful, having fun. As you will see, any little sister, she gets around her brothers. She's all lovey-dovey <laughs> on her brothers <laughs> and wanting to play. So you can see these were Yache sisters by how they interact in a sisterly manner. And if you read the rest of that portion, you can see their interaction with him. He said he turned into a younger man. It helped him come back to the simplicity of seeing them as sisters. And he was there playing with them too. Okay. Now, when we walk in the fear of the Lord, it fills us with the children of the spirit. Can you read it? Sirach chapter one, verse 16, please. To fear the Lord is fullness of wisdom and filleth men with her fruits. All right. Let's look at the definition of fruits. Some of the definitions for what we're discussing here. In G2590, it says the fruit of one's loins, his progeny, his posterity, that which originates or comes from something, an effect, result, a work, act, or deed. So you can see the definition being her fruits is can express that it's something these are fruits that come from her progenies posterities that come from her speaking of the children that we've covered thus far all right keep in mind too that fruit can also denote an act or a deed because what we do is the fruits of our labor right and the fruit of whom we're serving okay now the holy spirit wants us to be filled with her children can you read Sirach 24 and 19, please? Come unto me, all ye that be desirous of me, and fill yourself with my fruits. All right. That's required of us if we desire her. We have to get her fruits in us. Have to have her children. All those spirits that we've been talking about thus far. Can we read and see that the Holy Spirit speaks of her daughters too. Can you read Sirach chapter 24, verse 18, please? I am the mother of fair love. That's one of the women or virgin, okay? And fear. That's the woman called reverence, all right? And knowledge. The woman called knowledge, all right? And holy hope. This spirit is akin to faith that believes there is a reward for abstaining from evil. Remember, the Holy Spirit is a mother of all creation, so we can see that she names some of her children to help understand the women and virgins are her fruits. Now, mind you, the Spirit herself, she has her own works and character as well. Let's understand who she is herself. We've seen who her fruits are, her children. Let's understand her, the mother. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 22 to 27, please. For wisdom, which is the work of all things, taught me. For in her is an understanding spirit holy, one only, manifold, subtle, lively, clear, undefiled, plain, not subject to hurt, loving the thing that is good quick, which cannot be let it, ready to do good, kind to man, steadfast, sure, 
free from care, having all power. If you've been following all along with us for some time with the lessons and edification, you may notice that her ways encompass the names of the holy virgins and those righteous women. It should be understandable because she's their mother, who her children each have some of her characteristics and mannerisms. Like you see, she's free from care. If you remember, long suffering is free from care. <laughs> so you can see how the kids, they all take it after their mom. <laughs> all right. Continue, please. Overseeing all things and going through all understanding, pure and most subtle spirits. For wisdom is more moving than any motion. She passeth and goeth through all things by reason of her pureness. For she is the breath of the power of Elohim and a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Therefore, can no defiled thing fall into her. For she is the brightness of the everlasting light, the unspotted mirror of the power of Elohim, and the image of his goodness. And being but one, she can do all things. And remaining in herself, she maketh all things new, and in all ages, entering into holy souls, and maketh them friends of Elohim and prophets. Notice in verse 26, it says, She is the brightness of the everlasting light. The light that was created in the beginning was Yache. And he is everlasting as he is the everlasting father, as Isaiah 9 and 6 speaks of. She is who makes him bright, his mother. And she is the unspotted mirror of the power of Elohim. So she also mirrors the power of the father. A wife is the image of her husband. When you see a man's wife, you're supposed to see who he is because she's supposed to exemplify what she learned from him. Hence, it says she's the image of his goodness. What we see in the Holy Spirit, all this is the image of the goodness of the father. All right. Now, a person she enters into will operate in the manner she does to keep the law, which will make them friends and prophets. That's how she enters into holy souls and makes them friends and prophets of Allah. Let's look at what her works or her mannerisms are for us to follow and to know when we get into where her laws are having place in us. Can you read Galatians 5, 22 to 23, please? But the fruit of the Spirit. Hold on here. Notice it's just singular. This isn't talking about her children here. It's talking about her works, her deeds, her acts, her mannerisms. All right. Continue, please. It's love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith meekness temperance against such there is no law we get to understand some of the characteristics or mannerisms of the holy spirit herself and we also get to see that her children that she has carries her characteristics as well in different respects with all that we just went through you get to get some understanding of the holy spirit herself Get to understand some of her children, who they are, their names, and also the differentiation between some that are married and some that are virgins. And understand that she has multiple children. Lord Yache is the only begotten, beloved son, while he has a lot of sisters. Now, a person bearing the names of all her children can enter the kingdom since her children justify her can you touch that verse one more time luke seven thirty five, please but wisdom is justified of all her children she calls unto all to come to repentance to learn righteousness and depart from evil can you read proverbs 8 and 4 please unto you O men i call and my voice is to the sons of man 
Remember, Allah Hayyam's hierarchy of things. The head of Christ is Allah Hayyam. The head of man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. So the father has honor over the house. And Christ has honor over the man. And Allah Hayyam has honor over Christ. And Allah Hayyam gave the mother authority over the sons while they're young. Hence, the Holy Spirit is calling on to the sons of men because the men have to get it together first. Allah Hayyam holds us all accountable. Okay? Let's see what she's calling on to the sons of man to do. Proverbs 8, verse 13, 14, and 17, please. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13. The fear of Ahai is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way and the froward mouth do I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. Proverbs 8 and 17. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. 8 and 5, please. O ye simple, understand wisdom, and ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. She calls us to repentance, to understand wisdom in the fear of the Lord, and understand with our hearts to apply it in our life, as the Father wants us to depart from evil. As they said, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Okay. Job 28 and 28, please. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and depart from evil is understanding. Amen. There's also a precept to confirm that in Surat, where it speaks of a man of understanding, trusteth in the law, and is faithful to him as an oracle. Okay. Now, the Father taught us straightly what wisdom and understanding is, and his Holy Spirit is entreating us as a mother to her sons to turn unto it. Can you read Job? I'm sorry. Can you read Proverbs chapter 8, verse 6, please? Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. She gives counsel and wisdom to know right from wrong in the law and testimonies of Allah. Proverbs 8 and 20, please. I lead in the way of righteousness and in the midst of the paths of judgment. See, she will lead to do right and judging things rightly according to the word. Continue in verse 7, please. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. The law is the truth according to Psalms 119.42. So, nothing she says will be contrary to it. So you can understand when it's the spirit guiding or it's another spirit that is not of the family of Allah. Can you read verse eight, please? All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. As you see, she can't speak contrary to what Allah speaks. Okay. Not only does she speak truth according to the law, her words are in the righteousness of the fruits of her spirit. So, it's love, it's temperate, it's gentle and kind when she talks. So you can understand her character and temperament for a motherly example. Continue, please. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. No lust or unrighteousness is in her words to go against Allah law or his ways. Continue in verse 9, please. They are all plain to him that understandeth, and right to them that find knowledge. Interesting. This is important to understand, the Holy Spirit. Those that have applied themselves to the law to understand it and find knowledge of it through implement it into their lives can easily understand the truth and righteousness that the Holy Spirit speaks of and agrees with that what she speaks because it's right. Thus, her children of the sons of men are those doers of the law that they may be justified by her. Can you read Romans chapter 2 verse 13, please? But not the hearers of the law are just before Elohim, 
but the doers of the law shall be justified. So if we want to be justified by her, as our Lord Christ and the Holy Virgins are, we have to keep the commandments. With Sirach chapter 1 verse 26, please. If thou desire wisdom, keep the commandments, and the Lord shall give her unto thee. She herself confirms she is given to her children who come unto her to be filled with her fruits that come from obeying the law. The Rock 24 and 18, please. I therefore, being eternal, am given to all my children which are named of him. She is given to all nations that are named of Allah. I am. For understanding of those that are named of him, they have his seal on their foreheads, like the 144,000 of the children of Israel. Can you touch Revelations 9 and 4, please? And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of Elohim in their foreheads. Okay. We recall that she said, Come unto me, all ye that be desirous of me, and fill yourselves with my fruits. So if we desire her, we have to obey the law to be filled with her fruits. Can you read it? Sirach 24 and 23, please. All these things are the book of the covenant of the Most High Allah. Even the law which Moses commanded for an heritage unto the congregations of Jacob. So you can see that after she talked about being filled with her fruits, she was showing you what it takes to get there, the law the commandments, the covenant to obey Allah Hayyam's voice. Hence, all she is speaking of is going to be of the law of Allah Hayyam because the law brings forth the fruits we need to be filled with. Sirach 24 and 22, please. He that obeyeth me shall never be confounded, and they that work by me shall not do amiss. This is because... Her fruits keep a man in obedience to Allah Hayyam's commands so as not to get confounded or do amiss from the faith. All right. When a man keeps the covenant to obey the voice of Allah Hayyam in his law, the spirit, she'll guide him to walk in her fruits when he obeys her so that he will not do amiss. Thus, her laws are the fruits of the Spirit, guiding a person in the manner of how to keep the commandments, while the words of the Father is his commandments itself. Let's understand the mother of all creation a bit more. Can you read Wisdom of Solomon chapter 6, verse 17 and 18, please? But the very true beginning of her is the desire of discipline, and the care of discipline is love. And love is the keeping of her laws. Keeping her laws is love. So that means her laws are these fruits of love. The definition of love in the Greek is G26. Love, that is affection, benevolence, specifically a love fest. Charity, feast of charity, Dear love, so we see charity and love are the same thing. So how do we know we're walking in love or charity? Can we read Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 to 7, please? Charity suffers long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. It's not puffed up. Doeth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. It's interesting that that spirit is so close to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> It's like she, you know, love was the last of the women and love was the last of the holy virgins. 
And you know how it is with the baby. The baby stick close to mom more than anything. It's just, it's just a family dynamic stuff. She acts a lot like her. <sighs> so these are the signs of a person giving heed to the Holy Spirit's laws. Let's continue Wisdom of Solomon chapter 6, verse 18, please. And the giving heed unto her laws is the assurance of incorruption. Now, why is giving heed unto her laws of love keep us from incorruption? Can you read Colossians 3 and 14, please? And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. It's because love or charity is the bond of perfectness. So we can't be corrupted and giving heed unto her because there is no law against the fruit of her spirit. So now we can understand the difference in the commands of the father and the laws of the mother to be the words of Allah versus the fruits of the spirit. Now, anything else in that section, Zachla? Um, That's a rock 24 and 22 when it says, He that obeyeth me shall never be confounded, and they that work by me shall not do amiss. Um, that one, I thought that was very key because if you're obeying to keep the law of the Holy Spirit and you're obeying to, to keep the commandments, you can't be manipulated from doing so. Because you will never be confounded because you will always understand what it is that you're supposed to be doing. And you will always understand what's right from wrong. So you always have a clear mind and a clear focus or a clear view not to go from the left hand or to the right. And that's why it says next, and they that work by me. So if you're working those works, you shall not do a miss. You're not going to go off. So I thought that was very, very key. Um, and just charity itself, you know, charity, the, the works of charity, the works of love, like it's very key to, to, to understand. That's all I got. Praise Allah. I am. It gives perspective of why he has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of a sound mind. When you spoke about being clear-minded, it's the what's right in the sight of Allah and according to the fruits of the spirit. This ties all back to the anger lessons, the pride, and understanding that mental war that gets us sped up or anxious or hasty so that we can't think straight. And helps put perspective for our work to keep temperance, keep silence and purity our heart so that we may know how to hold fast the will of Allah Hayyam. Let's just focus on what's right in his law and according to the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the input. Amen. Now, Let's get into understanding some differences between the father and the mother. As a father has honor over the children, remember, we shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of Allah Hayyam, as obeying his voice is the covenant. Also, the ten sentences he spoke were the ten commandments of the covenant according to Exodus 34 and 28. The words he speaks is what teaches us what is holy and forbidden for us to do as a father commands his sons. Can you read Proverbs chapter 6, verse 20, please? My son, keep thy father's commandment. Let's look at the root word of this word for commandment. The root word is sawa. It means to comfort, a point ordain of divine act. You can see an example of how his words are ordained for commandments in the book of Jubilees, as when he speaks, the angels say, Amen, and the commandment is set for divine law. The word also means charge, give orders. 
So it helps understand his words are his orders that he has appointed for us. Now, in the strong definition, we can get some more understanding. It says this word is a primitive root. We're going to touch on the primitive roots of this primitive root because, as we've been learning, Bantu is Hebrew. So we can learn more about a word through the Hebrew language that's still spoken amongst the Bantus. So it's a primitive root intensively to constitute, enjoin, appoint, forbid. This is where we get to know this is still Hebrew today. The word forbid. What he has appointed for us, we are enjoined unto, which means we're urged to do it, as what he says makes up his law of what is forbidden for us. This word, sawa, expresses that his commands are forbidden for us to transgress still to this day. In the Igbo, you hear him say, unsa. Unsa means forbidden or holy. Or, and you have the other root word of the word wu. Iwu means law in Igbo still today. And then amongst the Yoruba, ewa means forbidden. So you can see what the Father appoints for us in his commands are forbidden for us to transgress because what he ordains is holy. Unsa. As Paul a person who understood Hebrew and the scriptures said the law is spiritual and holy and the commandments are holy, just and good in Romans chapter 7. Hopefully understand the language and words helps us know what the Father says. That's really the, the boundary for us to keep us. It's our life. All right. Let's look at the word for commandment now. In H4687, now that we have understanding of the root, it means a command, whether human or divine, collectively the law, a law, ordinance, precept. So Allah words are where our one doctrine in the faith is derived from, his divine commands even. His doctrine is a doctrine for us in the faith, as even our Lord teaches the doctrine of Allah Hayyam. Can you read John chapter 7, verse 16 and 17, please? Yachi answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man would do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of Allah Hayyam or whether I speak of myself. Thus, we have to study and implement the laws and testimonies so that we can do Allah Hayyam's will as it's necessary to know the doctrine of Allah Hayyam. Allah Hayyam being the source of doctrine, all scripture given by his inspiration is good for doctrine. Can you read Sirach 19 and 19, please? The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. And they that do things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. Right. The knowledge of those commandments is the doctrine of life. You see how everything goes back to those laws that he spake, obeying his voice. All right. Continuing 2 Timothy 3 and 16 and 17, please. All scripture is given by inspiration of Allah and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of Allah may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So our journey starts with the yoke of Christ as his servants by taking on meekness and lowliness of heart to be able to listen, learn, and grow, implementing the laws. First Timothy 6 and 1, please. Let as many servants as are under the yoke Count their own masters worthy of all honor. Also count our master and Lord Yache worthy of all honor. Continue, please. That the name of Allah and his doctrine be not blasphemed. So thus we get some understanding of the Father, that his words that proceed from his mouth is the one true doctrine that he has given, and his son teaches on his behalf. All right. Anything else on that, Zachwell? No, I'm good. Right. 
now let's understand the mother a bit more. <laughs> let's read the rest of Proverbs 6 and 20, please. And forsake not the law of thy mother. Oh. We know the mother's law are the fruits of her spirit. Let's look at the root word for laws to get some understanding. This root word, H3384, is yara. It's a primitive root. We're going to touch on the Bantu to get some understanding of this primitive root in Hebrew. It means properly to flow as water, that is, to rain. So the word yah, it's, it speaks on that. That's the meaning of it in um, Igbo still, to flow or to throw. Transitively, to lay or throw, especially an arrow, that is shoot. Figuratively, this is the key for us here in understanding her laws, to point out as if by aiming the finger to teach, direct, inform, instruct, show. So, yara, it's she's pointing things out, telling us this is the way, this is the right way to do it, okay? And looking at the actual roots of this word helps express that still today in Bantu. Because in Igbo, ya means to flow or throw something. And in Yoruba, aro or aro means words. So she's throwing words at us, exhorting us. This is the way to go. This is the right way. This is right in the commandments, speaking plainly to us. So when it speaks of her laws, it's yara. She's telling us, throwing words at us to understand what to do. So you can understand when it talks about her laws, it's obeying her voice, obeying the thing that she's encouraging us to do so that we can remain in the boundaries of the law of the Father and walk in it according to the fruits of the Spirit. You even have in the concordance, it explains this word well with when it speaks of throw, it's talking about throwing a finger to show a direction to walk or live. So when her words are being thrown, it's pointing us in the right direction of how we should live or how we should walk. And then further edification on teaching, it means to point the way one is to walk in life. So the root word shows the mother points out the direction we ought to walk in in the life of the commandments by her words. All right. Get understanding of the root words. Now let's look at that word for law in H8451. This word is two different spellings because it can be said two different ways. The first one is Tara or the second one is Tuara. Understanding this word before going into the definitions. In Igbo, tu means to throw. So you can see yet again, you have tu oro. Oro in Yoruba means words. So tu oro. She's throwing words again. <laughs> All right. And then also in Yoruba, to means right or correct. So if you're saying toro, she's throwing the right words, the correct words at you to help you do what's right. Remember it says she meets him in every thought. <laughs> so she's telling you hey, this is the right way when she's speaking toro okay as you can see those two spellings are just two variations of the word to help express the meaning of either to toro which is th she's throwing words or toro which is the correct words or the right words all right now the definition of toro is from H3384, which we looked at, Yara. It means a precept or statute, law. Those are we focus on the meanings we needed for understanding. Precept by English definition is a general rule intended to regulate behavior or thought. So bringing it all together, what the Holy Spirit speaks, she's given us the words that we need to hear to help regulate our behavior so that it can be within the law and the fruits of the spirit and regulate our thought process so that it can be within the law and the fruits of the spirit. Okay. The Browners Brick definition is law, instruction, direction, human or divine, 
as we know in this particular instance, this is the divine directions of the Holy Spirit. It also means custom or manner. So she gives words that points out for us instructions on the manner in which the commandments ought to be kept through her fruits. Hence, as John 1.17 expresses, that the law of the Father was given by Moses, but the grace and truth in the fruits of the Spirit in which the law ought to be kept was taught by Lord Yache, who had the Holy Spirit without measure, according to John 3 and 34, so that he may speak the words of Allah Hayyam and operate in the fruits of the Holy Spirit. All right, hopefully that helps for understanding the differences between the two, but also how it's all for the one goal of the truth. Let's see the words of Allah Hayyam Yache speaks after having learned from his parents. We're going into Proverbs chapter 4 verse 1. This is the Spirit of Christ speaking in Solomon. Chapter 4 verse 1, please. Zakwa. Hear ye children the instruction of a father and attend to no understanding. Here's what his father told him for our understanding. Okay, continue please. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. Yache's law and good doctrine is the instruction that his father taught him just as he said his doctrine is not his own. All right, continue, please. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. This is the only beloved son, Yache Christ's spirit, speaking in Solomon, telling us what his father's instructions were to him. Continue, please. He taught me also, and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments, and live. Confirming what we learn through the language and precepts that the Father's words are the commandments for us to live by, as his words are our life. Continue, please. Get wisdom, get understanding. Forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. So don't decline from the commandments. And once wisdom is gotten from keeping the commandments, don't forget her. And remember not to turn from the word of Allah Hayyam that we have to live by. Continue, please. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Thus, the children of Allah will take heed to his instructions and seek after wisdom, their mother, for guidance in how to fulfill Allah will by keeping his commandments. And she will lay hold of them that seek her as he commanded. For help in this, just in seeking the Holy Spirit for guidance and how to keep Allah commandments. The commandments teach, seek, go to a, a holy man that thou knowest to keep the law. Get counsel. It teaches in Ephesians how there are gifts that have been given unto men for the perfecting of the saints, whether teachers, prophets, and the ministers in the church. If you're truly seeking after the Holy Spirit, desiring to attain unto her, to keep the commandments, Go by the instructions that Allah Hayyam has given in the law. Find that counselor that's keeping the commandments. Go on to those teachers that Allah Hayyam has set in the church for the perfecting of the saints. Because Allah Hayyam isn't going to go against himself, nor is the Holy Spirit going to go against Allah Hayyam. That process is that process. So if we desire her, we have to go according to how they set things up. Okay. It's not something that we can just do on our own and we don't need anyone's help because Allah didn't ordain it that way. Let me uh, ask something for perspective. Um, we know that Yache is the only begotten son of the Father and the Holy Spirit. So he gets to partake in what comes from his mother or whatever portion is given from his mother and his father, right? 
Now, as far as the church, the church was given maidens that literally were helping her in the church being our mother and Yache being our father of who we were created from. You see that we don't innately inherit from the Holy Spirit. So that the Holy Spirit technically is our grandmother. So with us taking what we're taking, even with the church, how the Holy Spirit gave and how the Father gave maidens for the church to, to then prosper, the same is that Elohim gift the Holy Spirit unto us or the Holy Virgins unto us to help us prosper. So you see how, so it, it kind of makes sense of the dynamic that we actually have to obtain it from them to then be able to to do it just as Casa spoke of in um what was it um how he gave us some of us to be prophets some of okay. us to be teachers right so you can see how we may have gotten us a, a small piece of something from our father Yache and from and we may have inherited things from our mother the church we may have inherited that small piece, but to to grow more into the other parts that we need to obtain, it takes another force to give it unto us and to help us, just as the Holy Spirit helped the church. So you can you can see the dynamic that we actually need the help. And these things have to actually be given to us from another entity for us to then be able to receive it. So I give back to you, Casa. Amen. All things are from Allah Hayim, and it can't be unless he give it. Thank you for the insight. Praise Allah Hayim. Now, touching back on the Holy Spirit, if we seek guidance and fulfilling Allah commands, she will lay hold on us as we seek her, as he commanded. Can you read Sirach 4 and 11 and 12, please? Wisdom exalteth her children and layeth hold of them that seek her. He that loveth her loveth life. Because life is in the keeping of the commandments of her husband. And we can't love her without loving him. Continue, please. And just to validify, in Surah 4 and 11, it says, Wisdom exalteth her children and layeth hold of them that seek her. So we actually have to, to seek her for her to exalt us in areas with the virgins, to, to give them unto us. So it just, it all goes together. Continue, please. And they that seek to her early shall be filled with joy. Seeking her early in life will lead to joy in the end after going through her process for her children. That's important. Brothers and sisters, we're here today. While it is called today, if we seek her early in our lives, while we got the time, it's going to benefit us later on. Okay. Now, Let's look at her process to understand what, what we're going to go through in seeking after her. Sirach 4 and 17, please. For at the first, she will walk with him by crooked ways and bring fear and dread upon him and torment him with her discipline. She tries our soul with the discipline it takes to obey Allah voice, as Zachwa showed me. We have to be prepared and groomed to keep Allah Hayim's laws because they're spiritual. And as men, we are carnal and needing one that is spiritual to teach us. So this is a process that we may be built up. Continue, please. Until she may trust his soul and try him by her laws. So she's going to torment with that discipline until she can actually trust the soul. That's one process, okay? Then she's going to try him by her laws. 
So you we go and get disciplined until we actually can be trusted to obey Allah Hayyam. And then comes the next trial to see if she we can be obedient to her laws and the fruits of the spirit. When our soul can be trusted by evidence of obedience to Allah Hayyam's commands, then she tries us by her laws and the fruits of the spirit to help us learn the manner in which we ought to obey Allah Hayyam in truth and love. Continue in verse 18, please. Then when she returned the straight way unto him and comfort him and show him her secrets. All right, let's understand this verse. We've seen the process we have. We're going to have to go through. Show it obedient to Allah Hayyam to be trusted and then show that we can be trusted in obeying the fruits of the spirit. All right. Let's see what this means that after that, she will return the straight way unto us, comfort us, and show us her secrets. You all know our hearts are habitations for spirits, whether good or bad. And our bodies are vessels for whichever spirits operate in us. Now, understanding this verse here, from prior dialogues with Zachar, he explained the Holy Spirit is creating a habitation for herself that's comfortable for her by making sure it's subject to the law first and the fruits of her spirit. And after she trusts the habitation, then she can come straightly and direct because she trusts us. When she trusts you, she will then start to operate in you and rightly divide things, showing you through her spirit right from wrong, plainly, not in dark sentences or parables that you have to try to figure out. As it said, she'll show him a secrets, all right? Which also Brother Michael had well put in that dialogue for understanding. Her showing her secrets is basically meaning that she will guide you to know the will of Allah Hayyam and to examine all things through the law and testimony. This will make a person she trusts and enters into to do the following. Can you read Sirach 4 and 14, please? They that serve her shall minister to the Holy One. The Holy One is Christ. Those that are subject to Allah Hayyam's law and the fruits of the Holy Spirit will minister to Christ. Continue, please. And them that love her, the Lord doeth love. Wisdom Solomon and 28, please. For Allah Hayyam loveth none but him that dwelleth with wisdom. We can understand it now as a person is plainly walking in Allah Hayyam's will and the fruits being guided to know right from wrong to stay in love, obeying Allah Hayyam, they will minister to Christ faithfully and Ahaya will love them as they love his wife, the Holy Spirit, who is their grandmother, as we would now call it today, because Jerusalem, the wife of Christ, is our mother, if we are in the faith. So right, that part right there, right. Casa. Okay. I know that a lot of times we look at knowing right from wrong outside of ourselves. Like we think about the law or we think about what's right on the exterior. But this, what she's actually talking about is knowing the right from wrong within us. And really understanding when we're in the right internally and when we're in the wrong internally. Because that's where the confusion comes in. That's where it's not that clear. Because your own desires start blinding you. So it makes it hard to de decipher what's right and what's the will of Allah Hayyam versus what's not. <clears throat> because you could be keeping the commandment, quote unquote, in your own perspective, but really not keeping the commandment. In Allah Hayyam's perspective. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's really like, like when she really starts trusting you and not speaking to you in dark sentences where there are what what do they call it gray areas. She when she really trusts you, there's not gonna be any gray areas. Everything's gonna be black or white to really understand exactly what her process is and really understanding trying you by her law. Because truly the fruits of the spirit actually mend the gaps of Allah's law. That's why I said it's precepts. 
because the precepts actually mend the gaps that a person could see as a gray area. But when the fruits of the Spirit come in and, and you actually understand her law, it mends the gaps where it doesn't leave any area for play because everything becomes hot or cold. She completes so, him. Right. That understanding puts in perspective why the Holy Spirit is needed to get back to who we need to be because the devil had us eat the fruit and the knowledge of good and evil entered into us for us to have our own perspective and our own desires within us as to what is good and evil for ourselves. And now what you explain is necessary to get the Holy Spirit in us to help correct and rectify things to get us back to internally only seeing what's good and evil to Allah Hayyam and not ourselves. Right. Okay. Praise Allah Hayyam. And, and when we get further down, when we get further down to the, the um, act of Thomas, it's going to rectify it. And for parenting, you also get to see it takes two, two parents to build a family. As the father's, you mentioned the father's command, it's, it's like, it's one thing, but the gaps, your mother, she fills in the gaps of what your father said to help guide the household all right. All right. So there are two different entities. The father, the men were very logical. We're very straightforward. This is what you got to do. But the practicality of that comes from the mother. The understanding of, okay, this is how you do what your father's telling you. This is how you implement this in that situation or that scenario. That's the mother. And the, of course, the father teaches the mother. So the mother takes it and takes the information and shares it in her own comforting way. Because men were very, were more stern. <laughs> you know, we like, this is how you do it. This is what you do. Okay, the mom is like, okay, come on. I'm going to show you how to do this. I'm going to come on. Like, the, the, we just have different roles. That is all I am. <laughs> I get to see what is in the earth, is in the heavens. <laughs> right, praise Allah for that understanding. Now, let's get more understanding of the Holy Spirit. Sirach 4 and 13, please. He that holdeth her fast shall inherit glory. And wheresoever she entereth, the Lord will bless. At this point, we now have scriptural insight into the process it takes for her to enter souls. And as we have to be desirous of discipline, and she will try us by the discipline of obeying the voice of Allah to keep his commandments. And when we are found trustworthy in obeying Allah Hayyam's voice, then she will try us by her laws of love and the fruits of the Spirit to ensure she can trust our soul. Then, when we are worthy, Allah Hayyam will give her unto us. And it will be evident by being guided to obey Allah Hayyam in everything, knowing right from wrong, out of his law and testimonies plainly, whether within ourselves, within our thoughts, and in our outward expressions and actions. Thus, we got to pray for help and put the work in to overcome our iniquities, implementing the commandments and the fruits so that we may be able to get wisdom, the Holy Spirit, because she doesn't just enter into any soul or body, but one that is safe and trustworthy. Can we read Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 4 and 5, please? You mind if I ask something real quick? Sure. Um, you actually have to practice it. You actually have to practice the law and practice the fruits of the Spirit. Because if you're not willing to, to see yourself or you're not willing to admit a fault, 
how can you practice something that you don't want to implement or that you don't want to see in yourself to then have to implement something for you to practice or to grow in. And that's where we end up finding ourselves a lot of times where we're staunted in our growth because we don't want to confess our fault. We don't want to be wrong and we don't want to, to be honest with ourselves. And in turn, we will rather cleave unto the lie. And that lie actually stunts our growth. But if we're actually honest and we're actually quick to repent or quick to confess our fault, that's actually one of the good things that Elohim sees uh, very valuable is that we're quick to repent and that we're, we're willing and looking to grow. We're looking. We're not going to get into our sorrow like, oh, I messed up again, or I'm always messing up, or um, I or not wanting to admit that we have a problem in the area that actually needs us to implement or to put more um, practice or to put more energy into that area so that we can actually come out of it and we can actually start growing in that area. So when it actually uh, speaks that um, whosoever she entereth, the Lord will bless, being able to confess our faults strengthens us and helps us to, for the Holy Spirit to actually enter in and for Elohim to bless us, seeing that we're truly trying to practice and truly trying to implement these things and not just wanting things to change without putting in the work. And it's just going to go into where we're about to go. Um, a person who doesn't want to put in the work or doesn't want to see the thing that they're struggling in, it's going to show in the Holy Spirit. Of course, she's a spirit. She's going to be able to know exactly what's going on within you. So you, you really can't fool her, though you may want to fool a person or be a respect of persons to look one way in the sight of men, knowing that you were struggling internally or mentally or spiritually. So it's not helping you by not being honest. You you want to touch on that castle file? Read this. No. Praise Allah okay. for the admonition. Um, Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 4. For into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter, nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit and remove from thoughts that are without understanding and will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. So, if malice or ill will is a struggle or being subject to sin, unable to overcome our pleasure or the carnal mind or the lust of the flesh making us unable to stop sinning or struggling with deceit not being genuine or honest with ourselves and who we are and what we have going on so that we can see things in truth and, and get the insight to implement things to work on them or we're not being genuine and honest in our word or thoughts, or dealings, or struggling with unrighteousness within us, giving place to thoughts that are without understanding in the law. It's a sign to know we don't have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us as yet, and that's the truth. We have to be honest with ourselves about in order to walk forward free from lies so that we may attain unto her. Being honest with ourselves, we need to continue pressing forward learning the laws, learning ourselves through the law to see the good and the shortcomings within us, to get insight, to understand them and implementing laws to combat and overcome them all while praying to Allah Hayyam to help us keep the commandments and bring every thought against him into subjection to Christ so that we can be a soul the Holy Spirit can enter into and a body she will be pleased to dwell in because of our long suffering and cheerfulness, not being grieved to keep the commandments of Allah Hayyam out of love for them all. 
nor being grieved with finding out the truth about who we are, but being thankful to receive that blessing to have our iniquities revealed so that we can confess them and put the work in and grow from them. We may have the desire for the Holy Spirit. Hopefully understanding the way to get her is by becoming obedient to Allah Hayim's voice in the law and testimonies. We can now know who is put in us through these afflictions in ourselves to become obedient to the commandments so that we don't turn away from the law to go after our feelings or desires, lest she leave us to ourselves to our own ruin. Can you read Sirach 4 and 19, please? But if he go wrong, she will forsake him and give him over to his own ruin. Our lusts and pleasures and personal opinions that are not aligned with the law and testimonies by precepts can lead to our ruin. So let's beware to submit to Allah I am in everything to avoid evil. Read verse 20, please. Observe the opportunity and beware of evil. This won't catch something before we're going forward. I'm sorry. We talked about being able to be honest with ourselves and catch those lies and see the truth. That's the stuff can, can make us go wrong. Because if you can put the whole thing in perspective, we're going through a process of being tormented with the discipline of the law. It's changing who we've been in our lives. And if we are not willing to see ourselves, our emotions or our feelings about our true selves or trying to keep away from our true selves because we don't want it to be, it's going to cause us to go wrong. We won't be able to hear truth. We won't be able to hear understanding because it's all in the law. While we don't want to see the law in ourselves to change, it's going to cause us to fall to our ruin. All right. So that was real important what Zach was talked about. That was true what you just talked about. Because if, if if he go wrong, so say you do something that wasn't right and you're unwilling to admit it, what's going to happen? Because she's the one that's correcting you. Yeah. And if you don't want to hear her, she's going to leave you and say, okay, you don't want to hear me? Go, go the direction that you want to go. And you're going to find out the hard way. Yeah. A real parent. Right. Where you get choice. And that's understanding for parenting. Sometimes children are going to make decisions. They have to make their decisions. They have to make their mistakes to learn from. And hopefully it may not be their last. She didn't take it personal. She just said she will forsake him and give him over to his own ruin. She didn't take it personal that you're doing this against me. She said, okay, you have to go through your process. You have to see things for yourself. And I can't make you see something that you don't want to see. So you go and you learn your lessons and when you're ready, you're going to come back. Allah, I am willing. Mm -hmm. And that's parenting. You can't control your children. Your children are going to have a mind of their own, and they're going to make decisions. And they're going to see things from their own perspective. Your job is to speak to them and give them the perspective of Allah Hayim and the right perspective, not your own perspective, but the perspective of Allah Hayim, and, and pray that they take heed to it. And With constant admonition. <laughs> yeah, because righteous discourse daily availeth much. And as far as what a person can do to help your children, Really keep the commandments, learn them, implement them, put the work in a change because it's a spiritual war. Your children are 
having to learn to overcome spirits themselves and you being the head of the house or a parent in the house as a mother has to guide the house, a man being the head of the house or a mother being a guide of the house, what we do affects our children. So we want to see change with the work in ourselves. We're going to talk about that in the dynamics and honoring lessons. But that's the best way. Do what's right to Allah and pray, set a good example, and go after it in humility and trust in Allah to turn things around. That is definitely true. Because how can you teach somebody something that you don't know yourself? You're going to overcompensate or you're going to give them information that's not actually profitable, that doesn't actually work. So you actually have to be working it yourself and doing it yourself. So then you can actually help your children. So being a hypocrite doesn't only hurt you, it hurts your children too, because they don't have someone to lead them or to guide them through situations or to guide them through dealing with certain spirits that they may run into. And because you don't have the experience, you can't guide them either. You can't help them. But that would be the blind leading the blind. So you see how important it is for a parent to actually start implementing these things and, and working on these things so that they can actually help their children seeing the things that was helpful to them, especially the fathers, because your children are of your tribe. So with you working through things and actually learning how to get through them, it's going to help your children. Now, it's different if the father and the mother are of the same tribe, but usually that may not be the case. So you see how more important it is for the men to actually do it so that they can actually set that example. Is that how I'm for understanding? Was there anything else? No, no, I'm good. Okay. So kind of getting back into it here. We don't want to be forsaken by not seeing things truly or letting our desires, pleasures, or emotions keep us from enduring the process of correction and seeing ourselves in truth to change the bad and build on the good and add other good things to us. Let's observe this opportunity and beware of evil. As we see this opportunity for the Holy Spirit to be with us, let's beware of evil, observing the law and the fruits of the Spirit. Can you continue, Surah 4 and 20, please? And be not ashamed when it concerns thy soul. And if we make a mistake in the learning process, do not be ashamed to confess to bring glory to Allah and grace because we were ashamed that we did evil and we straightway repented. Verse 21, please. For there is a shame that bringeth sin, and there is a shame which is glory and grace. Let's understand the two types of shame. Shame for vainglory's sake or shame for the glory of Allah Hayyam. Proverbs 28, 13, please. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. If we are ashamed for vainglory's sake because we don't want to look bad, we'll be covering our sin in the sight of men, trying to look righteous to them not confessing, and we will not prosper as it will bring forth sin because it's the spirit of deceit instead of humility in that work. But if we're ashamed for the glory of Allah Hayyam, because we did evil and confess and forsake our mistakes by getting counsel and implementing Allah Hayyam's commands, we will find mercy, prosper in growth, taking advantage of the grace we have and have glory in the end when the Spirit gets us where she needs us to be. With all this, let's not let anyone cause us to sin, having our goals for the Holy Spirit to enter into us and dwell in us in mind. Sirach 4 and 22, please. Accept no person against thy soul, 
and let not the reverence of any man cause thee to fall. This brings us back to the discussion of the law. This brings us to the discussion we're going to end up having about the law. We can't let reverence for our parents or any man or woman or even our children or even ourselves with our own desires be our cause for sinning. Because we were respecting persons designed to please people more than Allah Hayyam, or we were self pleasing, loving our pleasures more than Allah Hayyam. We got to have Allah Hayyam first and love Him first, not worried about having the glory of being accepted or liked by anyone, as there is nothing in the commandments about glory or first places. Can you read Hermas, Parable 8, chapter 7, verse 6, please? Life is for all those that keep the commandments of the Lord. But in the commandments, there is nothing about first places or about glory of any kind. So there's nothing about being someone's favorite or seeking the glory of a person, approval, or seeking the glory of a person's approval or having the glory of any kind from anyone. Continue, please. But about long suffering and humility in man. That's what Allah Hayyam's commands teach. Continue, please. And such men, therefore, is the life of the Lord. Humility and long-suffering is the life of the Lord, taught in His commandments. Hence, our focus is to do our duty to fulfill the commandments and to keep a humble mindset through it all, not desiring glory for ourselves. Can you read Luke 17 and 10, please? So likewise ye, when ye have done all those things which are commanded you, say, We are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. It's the simplicity of it, being meek and lowly of mind. Anything else in that section? Um, yeah, just humility. Um, all of this really goes back to Humility, because humility actually is what allows a person to grow. And pride is what actually stunts a person from growing. So even in Luke 17 and 10, that mindset, which is actually what it's talking about, is a mindset of humility. And if we look at ourselves as we're unprofitable servants, and we're doing that, which is our duty to do, to keep the commandments, and to, to walk in the law of the Holy Spirit, then that's going to be our duty. That's going to be our focus. But if we're looking and we're allowing that pride to dwell and operate in us, we're going to want to be esteemed in the sight of men. We're going to want to be held in honor in the sight of men. We're going to be wanting to be perfect or look perfect in the sight of men. When the perfection and humility it's actually in the heart that we're actually trying to get it right, that we're actually putting forth the effort and in, in, in the practice to get it right. Not that we're already perfect, but that we're striving to be perfect truly and not only look perfect. So there's, that's the big difference in the pride and humility of the mindset. Thank you. Amen. All right. So, pleasing Allah Hayyam in all things. It's a focus for us. As we understand, it's not only for ourselves, but it's also for our family. Yache himself wasn't focused on pleasing men or their opinion of him because he sought to be justified by doing what's right to his heavenly parents above all. Let's look at it. it in Luke 7, verse 34 and 35, please. The Son of Man is come eating and drinking, and ye say, Behold, a gluttonous man and a wine-bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. Look at this here, how he was literally eating and drinking, which is lawful to do. But men viewed him as evil according to their perception. But he kept the law in every respect. We know he wasn't a wine bibber or a glutton because that's against the law. 
He was focused on doing the law in every respect and sure he was just in his mother's sight in heaven, no matter what men thought of him. As we know, Luke 7 and 35 spoke of how wisdom is justified of all her children. So he teaches us to be as he is, loving our heavenly parents above and first before our earthly parents or being concerned with what others may say about us or think about us or perceive us to be while making sure we always do what's right and what's according to the will of Allah Hayim. Gospel of Thomas, 101, verse 1, please. Yache said, Whoever does not hate his father and his mother as I do cannot become a disciple to me. And whoever does not love his father and his mother as I do cannot become a disciple to me. For my mother Mary is my mother of the flesh, but my true mother gave me life. Hopefully... That helps with simplicity of understanding that obeying Allah Hayyam in his law is above pleasing men or the love for parents because we need to be justified in Allah Hayyam's sight rather than to men. This means that the simplicity is love our parents in heaven to obey them above all else, not preferring our parents on earth or anyone over them to do anything against the will of our heavenly parents. Yet, we shall reverence our earthly parents, whether they are in the Lord or not, because that's the will of our heavenly parents. And we shall also be at peace with all people, giving people their due respect and love, as they are also the creation of our Allah. Okay. Understand Christ when he said, Whosoever shall not hate his father and mother as he does, he wasn't literally speaking of hating them. He was speaking of not preferring them over the will of Allah Hayyam. Okay. Now let's get the final admonitions of our heavenly parents for this lesson. That is, let's see what our mother, Jerusalem, is not speaking of grandma, the Holy Spirit. This is Jerusalem, the mother of us all. Let's get some words from her. Let's read Galatians 4 and 26, please. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. This is Christ's wife. For edification on her words to her children, reference the playlist, understanding the church, and see the lessons, who is the Lamb's wife, and the church is called to repentance. Okay? Well, we're going to touch on some of her words here now. In Baruch chapter 4, read in verse 8. To 30, please. Ye have forgotten the everlasting Alahayim that brought you up, and ye have grieved Jerusalem that nursed you. The everlasting Alahayim. This is Yache, the everlasting father. He's the one that brought us up. And Jerusalem that nursed us is our mother, the mother of us all. Okay, so we can know which parents are being spoken of here. Continue, please. But when she saw the wrath of Alaheim coming upon you, she said, Hearken, O ye that dwell about Zion, Alaheim hath brought upon me great mourning. For I saw the captivity of my sons and daughters, which the everlasting brought upon them. And this is important for us to understand. We have to see that this actually came from the everlasting. It's from Yache. What we went through in life from history to present day is from Allah Hayyam for our growth and also for our works, the works of our fathers and the works that we've done. It's not something for us to blame on someone else, but we have to take accountability that it's for our sins that we're in the position we're in. Okay. Continue, please. And add, if you will. Mm -mm. I don't know that. Okay. With joy did I nourish them, but sent them away with weeping and mourning. Okay. Let no man rejoice over me, a widow, and forsaken of many, 
who for the sins of my children and left desolate because they departed from the law of Elohim. Perspective. Our mother, Jerusalem, the mother of us all, she's grieved because we departed from the law of Elohim. She wanted us to keep that. She understood the magnitude of keeping the law. And hopefully we get understanding of it today, seeing is this very thing, the things that we're talking about today that we need to get back to so that we could be in that joyful nourishment of our mother. All right, continue, please. I do have an admonishment for, for wives. When your <laughs> husband is doing something that you may not understand, don't go against them because Jerusalem didn't go against and turn her frustration toward Yache. She seen that the children weren't doing right. And though she didn't, though that wasn't her desire for them, she still stuck with her husband and trusted in him. So. That's we going that's going to, she going to say that. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. important. Um, Baruch 4 and 13. They, they knew not his statutes, nor walked in the ways of his commandments, nor trod in the paths of discipline in his righteousness. They didn't have the Holy Spirit. They knew not his statutes, nor walked in the ways of his commandments. Remember, the Holy Spirit teaches the manner in which the commandments ought to be kept nor trod in the paths of discipline in his righteousness. Remember, the spirit, what she learned comes from him. The discipline she teaches comes from him. They didn't attain unto her. Okay? For all this is why we were put in the positions we've been put in. Continue, please. Let them that dwell about Zion come, and remember ye the captivity of my sons and daughters, which the everlasting hath brought upon them. All right, let's jump to verse 17, please, okay. to see how she's going to help. <laughs> but what can I help you? For he that brought these plagues upon you will deliver you from the hands of your enemies. Go your way, O oh my children, go your way, for I am left desolate. I have put off the clothing of peace and put on the sackcloth of my prayer. I will cry unto the everlasting in my days. The Spirit prays to us. Jerusalem is praying unto Yache for her children. For encouragement to know Elohim, this Holy Spirit, Yache, the church, Jerusalem herself, they want to see us succeed. Okay? We have support from our parents in this walk. All right? And you also get to see the power of prayer. As Zachwa mentioned, for wives not to be deterred from staying in agreement with their husbands. If you see something going on, the power of prayer. All right, get understanding as she understood the everlasting is going to turn it around. All right, things are going to work out. Talk to your husband, get understanding of what's going on, and pray that things be prospered. Okay. Be of good cheer, oh my children. Cry unto the Lord, and he will deliver you from the power and hand of the enemies. And teach your children to pray as well. And to stay in the right spirit. All right. And here she's telling us, our mother speaking straightly to us, be of good cheer. She understands what actually gets us the Holy Spirit, cheerfulness and long suffering. We have to come out of that sorrow going through this process. Be of good cheer. Pray unto the Lord. And believe that he's going to deliver us from the power and hands of the devil. All right. Continue, please. For my hope is in the everlasting, that he will save you. And joy is come unto me from the Holy One, because of the mercy which shall soon come unto you from the everlasting, our Savior. Remember, the everlasting is Yache. This wife did not lose faith in her husband. And she referred to him as our savior, because remember, the husband is the savior of the body. He saves his wife. She, confirming this is her that's speaking, 
the Yacha is her savior too. Okay. Continue, please. For I sent you out with mourning and weeping, but Allah will give you to me again with joy and gladness forever. Like as now the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity, so shall they see shortly your salvation from our Allah which shall come upon you with great glory and brightness from the everlasting. Continue, please. My children, suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from Allah for thine enemy hath persecuted thee, but shortly thou shalt see his destruction and shalt tread upon his neck. Suffer patiently. We need those fruits. Take it. Yes, wrath is upon us. We have to go through things. But take it with patience and be of good cheer. Continue learning, implementing, doing what we need to do. To knowing that eventually we're going to overcome the devil and going to tread on his neck. Okay. My delicate ones have gone rough ways and were taken away as a flock caught of the enemies. Be of good comfort, O my children, and cry unto Allah, for ye shall be remembered of him that brought these things upon you. For as it was your mind to go astray from Allah, so being returned, seek him ten times more. Energy, effort, time, all these things we have to put ten times more into actually being returned unto Allah. Zach, well, can you touch on for as it was your mind to go straight from Allah, please? Well, that just shows where the actual fault was starting off that mentally our our mental perception, our own perspective of the mind is what caused us to go astray from Allah. That's why it says, as it was your mind to go astray from Allah. Now the, the carnal sense of it comes with the mind. So for us to return to Allah, we have to return to Allah in the mind. That's why I said, so being returned, seek him 10 times the more. So now we actually have to change our perspective and our perception to actually be able to come back to Allah mentally so that the carnal will follow after. Because the carnal follows after the mind. So if lust and iniquities in our mind and in our hearts, our body is going to follow after that. But if righteousness and the law and the fruits of the spirit it's in our mind. Our bodies are going to follow after that. So it just, Allah is right. I mean, it's true. Reason for that. Important perspective. To do the mental work, not just the out, outer works of change. Really the change outer the work of change would make us a respect of persons. Yeah. Trying to look good for men while our mind is still away from Allah. Good perspective. Wash the inside of the cup so the outside may be clean also. Right. Praise Allah. We know what our mother wants us to do. To seek him ten times more in our minds. And changing within our minds. Catching the lies. Reference that lesson. Okay. Yes, indeed. That's a great lesson to catch for that. Just the whole growth within series, actually. Yeah. Amen. But he that hath brought these plagues upon you shall bring you everlasting joy with your salvation. Take a good heart, O Jerusalem. For he that gave thee that name will comfort thee. Yeah, Che. My husband going to comfort him. It's going to all work out in the end. And may that be encouraging for us to know it's going to work out in the end. 
just keep chugging away, keep working, keep working on the mental aspect of it. Get that right first and everything else will follow. Chiseling. Just remember the song. <laughs> chiseling, chiseling. <laughs> working at this event. <laughs> you got to break it apart. You got to. <laughs> Small pieces. You just chisel away at it until it's until it's another shape that that's just like what Hermes was talking about when he's talking about the the bricks mm -hmm. some the of hand. them all right some of them had to be chiseled and and made into smaller blocks you know yeah we're still able to enter into the church fit for the building all right praise Allah I am. so we're getting a standing from our mother Jerusalem now let's touch on the everlasting our father Yache. let's see what he says 2nd is just 1 verse 28 and 29 thus saith the almighty lord have I not prayed you as a father his sons as a mother her daughters and as a nurse her young babes that ye would be my people and I should be your Elohim that ye would be my children, and I should be your father. Our father, Yache, has been grieved by our treatment of him, yet entreats us to return and honor him in truth. Acts of John, let's see what he said through the apostle. Chapter 14, please. He then, through me, exhorts you. Brethren, I wish to remain without grief, without insult, without treachery, without punishment. For he also knows insult from you. He knows also dishonor. He knows also treachery. He knows also punishment from those that disobey his commandments. That puts the perspective straight out for us. We got to obey his commandments so that we will no longer grieve, insult, be treacherous, or cause punishment for him. Okay. Continuing what John said in regards to our Lord in Acts of John 94, please. Let not then our good Elohim be grieved, the compassionate, the merciful, the holy, the pure, the undefiled, the immaterial, the only, the one, the unchangeable, the simple, the guileless, the unwrathful. Even our Elohim Yahweh Christ, who is above every name that we can utter or conceive, and more exalted, let him rejoice with us because we walk aright. Let him be glad because we live purely. Let him be refreshed because our conversation is sober. Let him be without care because we live continently. Let him be pleased because we communicate one with another. Let him smile because we are chaste. Let him be merry because we love him. These things I now speak unto you, brethren, because I am hasting unto the work set before me and already being perfected by the Lord. For what else could I have say unto you? Ye have the pledge of our Elohim. Ye have the earnest of his goodness. Ye have his presence. They cannot be shunned. If then ye sin no more, he forgiveth you that ye did in ignorance. But if after that ye have known him, and he have had mercy on you, ye walk again in the like deeds, both the former will be laid to your charge, and also ye will not have a part nor mercy before him. Do we see the simple truth of what our Lord desires, what pleases him, and what John taught? We have to work. We have to get there to where we're no more sinning so that we'll be forgiven for all the things that we've been doing in ignorance. And once we get there, we can't turn back to what we were doing. Or else everything that we've done, it will be laid against us and we won't find mercy. For this reason... Let's labor to change. Second Corinthians 5 and 9 through 11, please. 
Wherefore we labor, that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. We won't have mercy if we didn't use the grace period to overcome our sins, but stayed in them. Continue, please. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Knowing our everlasting Father, Yahshua Christ is holy and has no affiliation with sin, the apostles were persuading men to repent and change and do us right so that we can actually be accepted of him. Can you read Hebrews 7.26, please? For such an high priest became us, who was holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners. This holy one separate from sinners, who will judge according to our deeds, is who the apostles are teaching us of, so that we may seek perfection. Colossians 1 and 28, please. Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Yahweh. Though all is not aware of who Christ and Allah Hayyam truly is, them that belong to Ahaya will know the truth of the matter that we have to separate from sin and we have to get to perfection to be accepted of them. Can you read 2 Timothy 2 and 19, please? Nevertheless, the foundation of Allah Hayyam standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Thus, if we call on the name Yahshua Christ as our everlasting Father, and Jerusalem as our mother above, along with Ahaya Ashre Ahaya as the Holy Father in heaven, and the Holy Spirit as the mother of our creation, we have to depart from iniquity to please our parents in heaven. In closing, let's keep in mind what rejoices our everlasting Father and Lord and Elohim, Yahshua Christ. Acts of John 14, please. Let him rejoice along with us because we conduct ourselves well. Let him be glad because we live in purity. Let him rest because we behave reverently. Let him be pleased because we live in fellowship. Let him smile because we are sober-minded. Let him be delighted because we love. Now, remember, we also have to put our heavenly parents first before our parents on earth to keep the commands and obey the voice of Allah Hayyam first and foremost without respect of persons to put our parents above Allah Hayyam or being worried about what they think if we had to go do whatever Allah Hayyam will for us to do to seek after the kingdom. Can you read Luke 9, 61 and 62, please? And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. This man, Zachor explained, was worried about his parents and family being upset with him if he left and followed Yacha without telling them farewell first, even though the Lord was before him to follow him. Continue, please. And Yahshua said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of Elohim. He erred in one to please men, instead of Elohim to obey his voice and follow him, not worrying about what men would say, so long as he knows he's doing right in Elohim's sight. So we can apply that to real-life scenarios today. When in a situation to keep the law, while being in an environment where everyone is walking contrary to it. Galatians 1 and 10, please. Do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. We got to serve Allah without concern for what people will think of you in this lesson. All right. Now, touching on tough upbringings. All right. Remember. What we've fallen into came from the everlasting, first and foremost, okay? 
Our parents are the people who begat us, and some have made sacrifices for us. While some weren't in our life according to our lives will, which is always for our good, if we view things rightly, that all things are from him. Can you read Barnabas 19 and 6, please? The accidents that befall thee, thou shalt receive as good, knowing that nothing is done without Elohim. Though some of us may have grown up fatherless or motherless without the healthy relationships with one or both of our parents, or had parents present, though we didn't receive the love and encouragement from them, we have to receive it as good from Elohim as he always has our best interests at heart. And his understanding, which is above our own, so let's not be grieved at what he willed to be, but rather we ought to seek after him, trusting that he always does what's best. Can you read Isaiah 55, verse 6 and 7, please? Seek ye a higher, while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto Ahiah, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our and to our Elohim, for he will abundantly pardon. I want to add for the perspective that for parents too, we may have made mistakes in raising our children and done a miss from what Elohim commanded. We also have to understand it was not done without Elohim's knowledge. And whatever transpired is for our good. And just as we've been talking about here, we learned we were doing the wrong thing. Okay, thanks for showing us. Let's forsake that way. Let's forsake those unrighteous thoughts. Let's return to Ahaya in our minds 10 times more. Because it's written, verse 7 of Isaiah 55, he will have mercy upon us. He will abundantly pardon if we change the way we operate, if we learn from our experiences and do better, okay? We change we, our thoughts, change our thought patterns. It says, Isaiah 55 and 7, says, and the unrighteous man, his thoughts. We have to let go of the disappointment or grief from the situations we grew up in or what we felt was missing in our upbringing or even as parents, what we had done, the mistakes we may have made, or things we could see and things we could have done better. But we have to let go of these things and seek after Ahaya, forsaking negative thoughts and our ways, and putting in the work to change our mindsets. All right? Parents, let go of the mistakes made and the shortcomings and seek after Ahaya, letting go of the negative thoughts, taking accountability, to find Elohim's way to obtain mercy. If you find out you didn't do some right, maybe a child brings it to you or you find it out from your own examination of yourself. Confess, take accountability and apologize. And then put the work in to be that person that you know you should have been, okay? Or you're now learning that you should have been. Understand, as Barnabas said, Nothing is done without Allah Hayyam, and his process is according to his thoughts, which are past finding out. Okay. Can you read Isaiah 55, verse 8 and 9, please? I just want to touch on something real quick before we keep going. Okay. Um, you said um, taking accountability. Um, part of that accountability is, is if you, one, if you confess that you struggled or that you did something wrong and you you see it is a problem you have to stay in that humility to know that it's something that can creep back on you and come back again and operate and not just going in that pride where it may have happened one time and then that pride kicks in and it's like well, yeah, I'm done with that. I've overcame that already. And then it creeps back in and it operates again, and you don't want to see it again. As And you forget that you actually have that problem. So that's one of the things of where you have to stay in humility 
And if humility is the problem, then that's the thing to focus and work on and be mindful of. Because for a lot of us, humility is the problem. So it makes it hard for us to grow in any area because the lack of humility to be honest and truthful with yourself of where you are in your journey and where you are in your growth and where you are presently not wanting it to be through the pride. So that that's a major thing, especially when humility is the thing that you actually need to work on. And that makes it tough in, other, in so many other areas. So just being mindful and seeing yourself and, and working on that, that mindset that you are an unprofitable servant doing that which the Lord hath bade you to do and putting Elohim first because the pride puts you first and then it causes you to be a respecter of persons wanting to be seen a certain way in the sight of men where that pride actually causes all these things, causes all these problems where that humility is actually something that you should be mindful of all the time and should be working and focusing on all the time and not letting it get away from you. You got anything on that, Casa Thank you for the edification. <laughs> Isaiah 55 and 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, say if I For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Elohim thought of his children in the world, and out of his love, he gave his own son to redeem the children of his son from the devil. We're going to look at that. But before going into that, like, really understand and accept if we want to get to where we need to be, to the peace and the contentment with the will of Allah. Everything that transpired, it was from him. And his thoughts are above ours. It's something he understood and knew that he was delivering us from, though we may not see it or understand it at this time. That's where that trust comes in, similar to the wife, the church, not being grieved with her husband because the children had to go. Likewise, let's not be grieved with our Allah because we had to go through what we had to go through. Because it was something he needed us to learn. It was something to gain from it all. Okay? Now, let's Can I add on to that? Yes, you may. It says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. So this even goes into the laws and the fruits of the Spirit. For many of us, we don't understand Elohim's laws and why he gave these laws to us. And what he's actually, what he's actually protecting us from. We only see it from our own perspective and our own desires and not truly understanding why he set things in place the way he did. Why he told us not to deal with graven images or to make them. Why he, <laughs> why he told us not to eat unclean animals. Like we may not understand it completely or some of us may not understand it at all, but it doesn't take away from the effects of it. That's what he's trying to explain. He said, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. You can't comprehend what it is that I'm doing because it's higher than what you would think. There's things that I can see that you can't see. So for us not to trust the things that Allah has set for us, knowing that it's for our best interest against things that we don't understand or spiritual things that we can't see, 
it's only pride that causes us not to be able to humble ourselves to Allah Hayyam. One that is lofty and great and greater than ourselves. It's like me being a parent and going through so many experiences in life and explaining those experiences to my children and telling my children what to look out for and them not listening to me, thinking that they know something that I don't know, though I've actually been through it. So you can see the, the parallel of it. Why would we not trust the one who created everything as if he doesn't have knowledge of what he created? Or what's being or what's been created amongst his creation? an interesting perspective yeah thank you praise our hand mm -hmm. hmm. our lord put his trust in him and we ought to as well even to give his own life for us can we read hebrews 2 Verse 13 to 18, please. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which Allah have given me. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. So see... Christ has children. We get to confirm that by precept, which Allah gave him in verse 13. And his children, those spirits, or those souls actually, those souls had to come into the world and partake in flesh and blood. So we're born from a man, the seed of a man, in the womb of a woman. He also himself likewise took part in the same. Our Lord and everlasting father came and did the same thing to partake in what we partake in from the seed of David through Joseph in the womb of Mary, his mother after the flesh, that through death he might redeem us and destroy the power of death that is the devil to help renew our minds, purge our conscience, and give us hope and grace to put the work and to change our mindsets. And change our actions. Continue, please. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Took away that guilt, that guilty conscience, purging it to now know we have an atonement so that we can press forward, not being worn down by the sorrow of the former mistakes. All right? Or the anxiety for whatever transpired in the past anxiety and sorrow for wherever we might be right now, but rather to look forward to the mark of the calling. Continue, please. For well, verily, he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. So he came from the posterity of men, just like we are from the posterity of men. Okay, continue, please. Wherefore, in all things, it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to Allah to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself hath suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. So see how he put his trust in Allah from the beginning? Because Allah wanted him to go through something to help him be better and being high priest, be better at what he's doing, his calling. All right. Allah gave him up so that he would suffer temptation and overcome the devil so that he can succor us to overcome our temptations too. 
Yach is a real father who went through temptations to overcome them so that he may understand what his children go through and then teach them how to overcome through honoring Allah Hayyam by obeying his voice. Similar to what Zach well talked about as parents, we have to get over it ourselves, get through our iniquities to then be able to teach our children. Okay. This causes for rejoicing when understanding how Allah Hayyam and our Lord have been parents to us through it all, though we may not have had the parenting situations we wanted in the world. And it was from Allah Hayyam for our good if we turn unto him and forsake our ways and the thoughts that had been leading us away from him. Can you read Psalm 68, verse 4 and 5, please? Sing unto Allah Hayyam. Sing praises to his name. Extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name, Yah, and rejoice before him. A father of the fatherless and a judge of the widows is Allah Hayyam in his holy habitation. He may have had us grow up in our respective upbringing so that he would let us go through what we need to go through to see him as a father in the end of it all after having brought us through unto the faith despite our respective circumstances. We came into this world to be tried. And when we are where we would be willing to hear our heavenly parents, they call unto us to repent and bring us to adversity to return unto them according to what Thomas was taught by Allah Hayyam and what he expressed in this song that we're about to go into. This is the Acts of Thomas. It's called the Hymn of the Pearl. Zakwa, I'm going to switch over to Reader. <laughs> and just an overview of this this is thomas explaining how we come into this world to go through things to be purified to be brought back onto allah high and pure okay acts of thomas chapter 105 and while he prayed all the prisoners looked at him and asked him to pray for them too and when he had prayed and was set down, he began to say a, a psalm. When I was a baby, too young to talk, in the palace of my father, and resting in the wealth and luxury of my caretakers, out of the East, our native country. All right. So this is speaking of the East on the heavens, where our souls were created and where we come from. So he's actually talking about the caretakers or the angels that actually tend to the new souls that are created. So he is talking about before his soul even entered into the earth and entered into the body. All right, go ahead, Casa. My parents equipped me and sent me on a mission. And from the wealth of their treasures, they put together a load, both great and light, so that I might carry it myself. All right, so let's figure out what this load is. Go ahead, Casa. Gold was the load. I received it from them that are from the land of the Eleans or Gullians. And silver from the great treasures of Gazak, the great and stones. Chalcedonies and rubies from the Indians and pearls from the land of Kosani or Kushan. And they armed me with immovability, which breaks iron. And they clothed me with the great garment with gems, spangled with gold, which they had made for me because they loved me, and with a robe that was yellow in shade, made especially for my stature. So hold on real quick, Casa. Now that load he was given, this is before he went into the body. This load was given him for what reason? Because it armed him with immovability. He was, see, when we come into this earth, even as young babies, we're clothed with such garments that Allah has put upon us to, to make us understand his will. And the world corrupts us. 
whether in our household or whether outside. That is where the corruption actually comes from. So we're about to understand the process of life. Continue, Casa. So they made a covenant with me and inscribed it on my mind so that I should not forget it and said, when you go down into Egypt, and bring back from there the one pearl which is there in the midst of the sea, strapped around the devouring serpent. You shall put on your garment with set with gems, and that robe on which it all rests and meet your brother, that is next to us, and who is well remembered as an heir in our kingdom. All right. So, we're all given one task though we may not remember that task which we're about to see exactly how that transpires but we're all given one task even as solomon said for the whole duty of man is to keep the commandments we have one task that we're given to go into this world and to do and to come out of it Right? And we're going to understand exactly what that is. But also, I want you to remember that he said, it said he made a covenant with me, right? And said, and that I should not forget it. And said, when you go down into Egypt and bring back from there the one pearl, which is there in the midst of the sea, strapped around the devouring serpent, this is the key part. He says, you shall put on your garment set with gems and that robe on which it all rests. We're going to get to that part later. I want to make sure that y'all remember that part because he was given clear instructions to do something. And we're going to see what he actually does. Okay. Continue, Casa. Did you want to touch on the brother that is next to us? He's going to come into the okay. he's going to come into the story. Okay. Chapter 106. And so I started out of the east using a road that was difficult and fearful with two of my guides because I was inexperienced traveling by it. So I passed through the borders of the Mosani, which is the resort of the merchants of the East, and reached the land of the Babylonians and came to the wall of Sarbug. And when I entered into Egypt, the guides left me, which had sojourned with me. Right, so that was the angels that was guiding him in areas that he was not familiar to get him to where he needed to be to start his journey or to start his mission. Then I went the quickest way to get to the serpent, and by his hole I dwelt, watching for him to doze off and sleep, so that I might take the pearl from him. And while I was alone there, I made my appearance strange. So I behaved and looked like a local. Now, hold on. Yeah, I remember what he was told. It says, when you get to the serpent, right? It says, you shall put on your garment set with gems and that robe on which it all rests. But what did he do? He put on garments and started acting like the locals. So he started operating in the ways of the world, trying to be a respecter of persons toward people, trying to blend in with people instead of doing what he was commanded to do. And started actually behaving like the people as well. So he started, he walked away from Alahim's law and started operating the law of the devil just to blend in.
Now let's see with him making that sacrifice to blend in how it was going to prosper him. What was going to happen to him next? Go ahead, Casa. And then I saw my kinsman from the east, the freeborn, a young man of grace and beauty, son of princes, an anointed one. Now look at that. When Casa talked about, and meet your brother that is next to us, and who is well remembered as an heir in our kingdom. Sometimes, Yache will come. He'll literally send someone of his spirit to be a companion and to understand us and to see what we're doing. He doesn't leave us to ourselves, though we may not understand it. He clearly seen the anointing in the person that came to meet him. He said, a young man of grace and beauty, son of princes and anointed one. He came to me and dwelt there with me. And I had him for a companion. Yache never leaves us. Even when we're on a mission, and we're going away from what we're supposed to be doing. He comes. And he watches us. Like a father. To see what we're going to do. Because he gives us that chance. We have to learn for ourselves. We have to make the decision for ourselves. He doesn't control us and doesn't try to control us. He allows us to, he gives us the commandment of what we're supposed to do. He tells us what to do, and it's unto us whether we do it or not. Continue, Casa. If you have anything, Casa, you can definitely add, brother. This is great. Praise Allah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. He came to me and dwelt there with me. And I had him for a companion and made him my friend and partaker in my journey. Now, look at that. He didn't even perceive what was going on, but he already knew, like, yo, this is my companion. I, he's going to go on this journey with me. Sometimes he sends a friend unto you, and you don't know the spirit of that friend. Continue, Casa. I would add it. It touches back to that, getting that counsel, not knowing it's Allah I am at work when we have a counselor, a holy man that keep the commandments, somebody to go to and have for help. All right. So I warned him to beware of the Egyptians and of partaking of those unclean things of theirs. Now look at this, right? So he warns them to beware of the Egyptians and to beware of the unclean things of them while he's dressing and behaving just like them. But he couldn't see himself. He could only see them. And this is where many of us fall into is that we can see the iniquity and the uncleanness of others around us, but can't see that we're operating the same by trying to fit in. Continue, Cuss. That's why I put on their type of clothes, so I should not look out of the ordinary. But be mindful, he didn't do what he was supposed to do. He didn't put on the garments with gems and the robe, which all things rest. So he's still in the iniquity. He's still in his iniquity. Because just like we talked about earlier, Alahayim's thoughts are higher than I thoughts. And his ways 
are greater than our ways. There was a reason why he was told to put on those garments, but he didn't follow the instruction, thinking that there was a better way. Continue, Casa. So let's see what befalls him going his own way. So I should not look out of the ordinary like an outsider that had come to recover the pearl. And also not to alarm the Egyptians to await the serpent against me. But I don't know how, but they did find out that I was not from their country. Now look at this. Let's put this in proper perspective. He didn't want to alarm the Egyptians. He was coming to, to deal with the serpent. The serpent is dwelling securely with the Egyptians. And he didn't know how they found him out. When the serpent is dwelling comfortably with them. The Egyptians were following the serpent. They were giving homage and credence to the serpent. So the serpent was giving them understanding. Now look what the Egyptians are going to do to him. Seeing that they're following after the serpent and the serpent is guiding and leading them. That's why Yahche said you can't serve two masters. And it says, what concord does Alahim have with Belier? When Alahim told him to put on those garments, he wasn't supposed to fit in. He was supposed to look out of the ordinary so that they could understand that he was coming from Alahim and that he wasn't under the dominion of the serpent. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Go ahead, Casa. And with cleverness, they mixed me a deception. So I tasted their food. Now, hold on. Who's clever? Who did they get this cleverness from? The same serpent that he was coming to, to overcome. That was the pearl. He had to overcome the serpent or overcome the devil in this life. And by overcoming the devil or the serpent, he would get the pearl, which is the sign of his victory. But the Egyptians, being under the dominion of the serpent, were given the cleverness from the serpent on how to overtake him because he was in iniquity already. If he would have done what he was supposed to do, he wouldn't have been in iniquity to be overtaken by the Egyptians or the serpent. So through the cleverness of the serpent wrought through the Egyptians, they were able to defile him and get him to fall. Go ahead, Casa. This made me forget that I was a king's son. And so I became a servant unto their king. Look at that. He became a servant unto the serpent and started following after the serpent's laws. He became blinded in his iniquity. And this happens to many of us. We get sidetracked. We get caught up in what's going on and being a respecter of persons that eventually we don't see that we're becoming just like everyone else until it's too late and we're lost in it through our own pride not wanting to see ourselves and our own desires continue Casa. I even forgot about the pearl for which my father has sent me. 
So you got comfortable living life and forgot about the mission that we were given to overcome the devil, being caught up with the devil. Go ahead, Casa. And by means of heaviness from their food, I fell into a deep sleep. Right. So being filled with their iniquity, being filled with their lust and their sin, fell into a deep sleep. Not a physical sleep, but a spiritual sleep, where he wasn't able to decipher good from evil anymore. Continue, Kassim. But when this happened to me, my fathers were also aware of it, and they mourned for me. So a proclamation was published in their kingdom that everyone should meet at their home. Then the kings of Parthia and them that bear office and the great ones of the east made a resolution concerning me. Now look at that. The Elohim and the angels, Elohim and the angels never forgot him. And they actually had a meeting concerning him to figure out what to do to get him back on track, seeing that he lost his way. That's the love of Elohim, not to give up on us, though we may have went astray, but coming right on time and saying what's needful for us to get us to refocus and to come out of it. And as parents, we have to do the same thing. We can't protect our children and try to stop them at every turn from doing something that's contrary to what we have spoken for them not to do or for them to do. They have to go their own way and learn their own, their own lessons. Because what that does is that strengthens them to stay in the right way, seeing that they know what happens if they go the wrong way and they know the prosperity of going the right direction and doing the right thing. It gives them confidence because they've... Um, what is the casa? They investigated the deity. Yeah. Our children have to investigate the deity the same as we have to investigate the deity. They have to learn what works and what's true and what's right. And they can learn that if us as parents are constantly trying to control them and trying to manipulate them to do what we want them to do or the goal the way that we want them to go. We have to give them that same free choice that Elohim as our parents has given to us. And to give them that same love, though they may go the wrong direction, not taking it personally, but knowing that Everything is coming from Elohim. So if they have to go through something, Elohim is bringing them through it, just like he had that friend that came who wanted to see him do well, even though he was going off. You got anything, Kaza, before we continue? Paul said in Romans 5 and 4, um, um, 5 and 3, that uh, we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience and patience experience and experience hope. So just as you're saying, the kids, they got to go through their tribulations too. You know, it's going to work that patience and they got to have their experiences because that experience is going to lead to hope. I have to investigate and seeing the way of Allah I am is the way. Yes, that's it. All right, you continue on your journey. Right. 
So the kings of Pathi and them that bear office and the great ones of the east made a resolution concerning me, and they decided that I should not be left in Egypt. So the princes wrote a letter to me, informing me about all of this, and that every noble signed their name on it. It so read, they came into uh, agreement. Look at that. They're in agreement. And it said every noble signed it, just like Yahweh, the everlasting father, and the church, Jerusalem, how they were in agreement. Though it was hard, but there was still the agreement. And there was understanding of why it was the way it was and what was going to become of it. See, when it comes to all the holies, they're in agreement with one another. But when it comes to the enemy, there's disagreements, there's seditions, there's heresies, there's strife. As seeking this journey and seeking this path of being holy, we should be able to come together and agree. And if we can't agree, then we have to see why we can't agree. What's stopping us from being able to agree with one another? Because they can do it. The ones that we are, we are claim that we're seeking to be as or to resemble, they can come into agreement. They can trust one another. They can follow one. So why are we struggling? Continue, Brother Kass. It read, From your father, the king of kings, and your mother that rules the east, and your brother that is second to us, to our son that is in Egypt, peace. Rise up and wake up from your deep sleep and listen to the words of this letter. Remember you are a son of kings, but you have come under the yoke of bondage. Remember the pearl for the which you were initially sent to Egypt. Remember your garment spangled with gold and the glorious mantle which you shall wear and with which you should cover yourself. Your name is written in the book of life with your brothers whom you have met. You shall be in our kingdom. My letter was special because the king, the ambassador himself, sealed it with his right hand because of the wicked evil ones. Oh, hold on, Casa. Where is boasting then? Where is boasting when we were in a deep slumber and sleep that no man could wake us up? But the great mercy of Elohim came upon us and awoken us out of our slumber. Where is boasting? Where is pride? How can we walk in pride knowing that it's only by the grace and mercy of Elohim that we are able to be able to see our iniquity and to see what we're doing wrong and to come out of it? We didn't do it ourselves. It's only through the grace and mercy of Elohim and the holy angels praying and interceding for us and their will upon us to pull us out of the iniquity and the bondage of the devil. Just like Kathafo said earlier, it's not about first places. It's not about first places. Seeing that Elohim, through his grace and his mercy, chose us 
and loved us so much to not leave us where we were. And that goes for children, that goes for adults, that goes for parents, that goes for fathers, mothers. Where is boasting? Why are we so exceedingly proud? Where is humility? Knowing that we did nothing to deserve it. Continue, Brother Casa. My letter was special because the king, the ambassador himself, sealed it with his right hand because of the evil wicked ones and the children of the Babylonians and the tyrannous demons of Labyrinthus. Then the letter flew like an eagle, the king of all the fowls. It flew and came down by me and became a speech to me. Then I recognized the sound. I started waking up out of my sleep. And so I took the letter and kissed it, and then break the seal and read it. Everything written in it concerned that which was recorded in my heart. Immediately I started to remember that I was a son of kings, and my freedom desired after its own kind. Then I remembered about the pearl for that which I was sent down into Egypt. I soon started and began with charms against the terrible serpent. Now let's find out what these charms are. Go ahead. And I overcame the serpent by calling the name of my father, Ahaya, upon him. And the name of our second in rank, Yache. And of my mother, the queen of the east, Ruaka Kwadoshi. All right, so you see how powerful those names are. When he was against the serpent, those are the names he invoked to put the serpent under bondage. Go ahead, Casa. I then took the pearl and turned back to bear it to my father's. So I stripped off the filthy garment from me and left it there in Egypt. Now and look at that. Hold on, Casa. Mm. So it wasn't until he received the letter and awoke out of his slumber. And then he invoked the names of the Father, Yahweh, and the Holy Spirit. He got the victory over the serpent. Then he was able to take the garments of iniquity off. Let y'all think about that for a moment. Go ahead, Casa. So I stripped off the filthy garment from me and left it there in Egypt and headed directly towards the light of my fatherland in the east. And on my way home, I found a letter that woke me. And in the same way that it woke me, it also guided me with its light that came from it. For at times my royal garment of silk shone before my eyes, and with its own voice it guided me and encouraged me to be speedy, and so with love leading me it drew me onward. All right, so we see like how a woman will usually wear silk, how it's not usually a man that wears silk. And you see that she guided him, and with her love, all right, so we get to see the embrace of the Holy Spirit actually guiding him. All right, so we get to see that garment. I passed by Labyrinthus, Sarbug, and I passed Babylon on my left, and I came unto Meson the Great, that lies in the shore of the sea. And I took off my bright robe, and the mantle whereby I had been clothed from the heights of Warkan, or Hyrcania, 
My parents had sent thither with their treasures to whom they trust with it because of their faithfulness. Now look at that. Remember when we talked about the Holy Spirit and how she would try you by her laws until she can trust your soul. She'll come upon you crooked ways. And then after that, she'll come upon you the straight way. Now he's got putting on garments that were given unto him to whom they trust with it because of their faithfulness. So yeah, he went through the process. He had to fight and, and get his way out and by the grace and mercy of Elohim that awoke him for him to then fight seeing what laid on the other side. He was able to then, okay, make the decision and to commit to the decision to do what's right and to follow after Elohim and to do what he was missioned to do or commissioned to do. And then he was trusted after he came out of it and overcame the devil. So he was able to put those garments on. Continue, Casa, please. But I don't remember the brightness of it. Because I was still only a child and very young when I left it in the palace of my father. But suddenly, I saw the garment that was made for me as if I viewed it in a mirror. And I saw in it myself, and I knew myself through it. That once we were divided asunder, being of one. And now again we were one in one shape. Yes, the treasures also brought me my garment I saw, that they were two, yet in one shape. And one royal sign was set upon the both of them. The money and the wealth which they had, they paid me the old price. And the lovely garment, which was full of bright colors of gold, precious stones and pearls of beautiful shape, they were fastened with. And with stones of immovability were they fastened. And the likeness of the king of kings was all in all of it. Sapphire stones were fitly set in it. And again I saw that within it, it moved with knowledge, which it transmitted out, and it was ready to talk. So we get to see from the beginning how Yache or Emmanuel was formed in us. So we have to get Emmanuel back in us, and that's why we have to remove the evil spirits from within us that's causing Yache to knock on the door and be on the outside and not be able to be in our vessel the way he was when we were first formed. So we have to be strengthened in, in righteousness again so that Yache, we can put that that put that robe or that cloak back on us so that the King of Kings and how he spoke and his and his knowledge so that he can actually operate in us again. So we get to see the fullness of Emmanuel being in us, or us being one, as it kept on referring to, that the two were one. And that's how we're supposed to be, one with Yache, being one body. Go ahead, Kyle. And I heard it say, in front of those that had brought it, I am of him that is more courageous than all men, for whom I am a backup even to the Father himself. And while I observed his stature, and my own grew in accordance with his functioning, and with kingly motions it was transmitting toward me and began resting upon me. And it hurries on, reaching out towards me from the hand of them that brought it, so that I would receive it. And my desire got stirred up to reach for it and to receive it. 
and I stretched out and received it and bejeweled myself with the beauty of its colors. And now within my royal robe, excelling in beauty, I exhibited myself wholly. And when I had it on, I was lifted up to a place of peace and homage. And I bowed my head and worshipped the brightness of the Father, which had sent it to me. That's the robe of immortality. Go ahead, Pastor. For I had carried out his commandments, and he likewise that which he had promised. And at his palace, which was there from the beginning, I now mingled among his nobles. And he rejoiced over me and received me into his palace. And all his servants praised him with sweet voices. And he promised me that with him I shall go to the gates of the king. And with my gifts and my pearl, we may now appear together before the king. Amen. Amen. Wow. Praise Allah. We hope this was edifying. And we look forward also, we have some more lessons that complement this lesson, honoring your parents in the law class. And also there's going to be a lesson on the dynamics of parent-child relationships to get into some things to help us. Really hope this was edifying. It was edifying for me. So Allah be with us and continue this process and building. Um be sure to check us out on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. All, TikTok. Thank you. That was the one I was missing. <laughs> TikTok. <laughs> check out the website, HebrewReaders.com. Visit us on YouTube at Hebrew Readers Church. Any questions, comments, feel free to write in the sec uh, comment section or email us at HebrewReaders at Gmail. And, um, you know, love hearing from you. Love your questions because it always helps with some understanding of sound doctrine to help build us in faith to get closer to our goal of getting this Holy Spirit. Um, also check out Zach Watt did it again. Music, very good for the spirit. And check out Zach Watt did it again on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, YouTube. Good content, good music, good for building. And uh, yeah, anything else, Zach Watt? Oh, I'm good, man. Praise Allah, honey, man. Hope this lesson helps everyone and truly puts things into perspective and definitely watch out for the law class lesson in the next lesson to get further education on this lesson. All right. Happy Sabbath and peace be with you all. Ciao. Peace be with you all. Ciao. Hebrew reader, Hebrew reader, Hebrew reader, church.